<laughs> On the day of the worst blackout in Gotham City's history, Arnett Crocker, one of the most important businessmen in Gotham, whose company's size is only dwarfed by Wayne Enterprises, decides to throw a lavish party for the wealthy. To do so, he and his men rob a small local grocery store in broad daylight. Witnessing this is a young petty thief named Selena Kyle. Though she tried to stop Crocker at the time, she got into a fight with one of his goons and was badly beaten. So she chooses to use the blackout as an opportunity to get revenge. Using some stolen climbing gear, she infiltrates Crocker's party, though is nearly gunned down in her attempt to get in. The party is full of influential players in the world of Gotham that Kyle recognizes. This includes major crime leader Oswald Cobblepot, as well as actor Basil Carlo. There's also many extravagant attractions, including a live circus performance. Dressed in formal wear, Kyle quickly attracts the attention of Crocker, and witnesses him selling the powerful prototype battery that could help power buildings in Gotham throughout the Superstorm event, no matter what the Riddler does to Gotham's power. Selina is caught spying though, and Crocker, without hesitation, orders the young woman be put to death. Kyle manages to grab a whip she found at the party, and though this is her first time using such a weapon, she finds it very effective, boasting a natural talent for it. Selina uses this opportunity to subdue Crocker and his men, taking the batteries, including the ones powering Arnett's own building, and having the local grocer distribute them to her community. Kyle is happy and finds the experience truly inspirational setting her sights on greater ambitions as a thief in the future. What matters most, however, is that this means everyone on her block will have power and heat. In the days to come, that could very well make the difference between life and death. Only a few weeks after graduating from Central City Police Academy with a specialization in forensic science, Barry Allen is just settling into his new job in his home city's crime lab. When a call is put out for volunteers to help with the emergency in Gotham, even though he is brand new to the force, Allen is quick to volunteer. And so as the city braces for Superstorm Renee, Barry finds himself chasing down a drug addict, hooked on a dangerous new substance called Icarus that's recently appeared across Gotham City. When Allen corners the man, the addict takes the drug, grabs Barry's taser, and nearly shocks the rookie officer. Fortunately, he's rescued by two more experienced GCPD officers, Harvey Bullock and his partner Spencer. Bullock admonishes Barry for not using his weapon more readily, when suddenly, the drug addict erupts in flames. The fire is quickly extinguished thanks to the timely arrival of a Gotham Gazette intern named Iris West, but still, the man is killed in the process. Iris tells the police that this is what Icarus can do to people, so they go to the Gotham Free Clinic in an effort to learn more from another addict, until the building explodes immediately upon their arrival. Barry shocks Harvey when he bravely runs into the building to save as many people as he can, including Iris West, who just so happened to have been there at the time, impressing the young woman. The fire is apparently the result of another Icarus user outright exploding thanks to the superpowers the drug gave him. Doing more research together, Iris and Barry realize they grew up in the same area and nearly kiss, only for Alan not to pay attention and set an experiment on fire. This does give him an idea and they head out to a pier Barry believes would have been used to reduce the risk of creating such a combustible drug. There, Barry and Iris witness Spencer working as part of this operation, but are caught at gunpoint by him. Luckily, Harvey Bullock arrives to help out, allowing Barry to save Iris from being shot by Spencer but in turn, Spencer decides to forcibly dose Barry with Icarus, wildly distorting Alan's senses, but granting him the strength to knock Spencer down. Thinking fast, Iris douses Barry with a cooling liquid to save him from burning up, while Bullock shoots Spencer. Alan barely survives the incident, but Spencer does not. For the sake of the crooked cop's ailing daughter, however, Bullock and Alan agree to protect his reputation by covering up the man's crimes and allow him to have a heroic funeral under the false narrative that Spencer died stopping his own drug operation. Barry, still recovering, heads back to Central City, but not before finally getting a chance to kiss Iris West. Both are left thinking of a brighter future.
A week into the blackout and Bruce Wayne, having just returned to the public eye after that press conference, has gone missing once again. The looting and chaos in the city has grown, with thousands now reported missing. But another wealthy individual, thought dead to the world, has also returned. Oliver Queen, having been stranded on a remote island for years, has finally come back to his home in Seattle. Greeting and discussing this with Walter Emerson, acting CEO of Queen Industries, Oliver is informed that his mother Moira went to Gotham to help out on the front lines. Hearing this enraged Oliver, insisting that he go rescue her. This is lucky too, as Moira Crean and her security detail, including a man named Diggle, were definitely in danger, taken hostage by a masked criminal obsessed with moths. Oliver, not wanting his return to be public just yet, manages to sneak into the city along with archery gear, which Crean had become highly proficient with thanks to his time on the island, donning a green tunic, and even experiencing an early encounter with the Dark Knight. Oliver is able to rescue his mother and her bodyguard, Diggle. Moira instantly recognizes her son and embraces his return, but can't help but notice her child has been changed immensely by his experiences on that island. Collapsed on the ground, Bruce Wayne looks up at Carl Halpern, also known as Dr. Death. The villain grabs Lucius and nearly kills the scientist. Even though Fox just attacked him, Wayne leaps to his feet to help defend against this gruesome villain. Bruce manages to knock Halpern to the ground. Lucius apologizes to Bruce, explaining that he injected both himself and Wayne with a vaccine against Dr. Death's formula to protect them against Harlfern's inevitable attack. Carl manages to catch up to them and nearly cracks Bruce's skull open when he is shot by James Gordon, who arrives on the scene. Dr. Death flees, and Bruce falls unconscious. He wakes up beside Alfred later with a broken skull and his leg handcuffed to a hospital bed. Gordon is still with them, demanding to know answers about Carl Helfern. Though he insists on working with Bruce to stop the villain, Wayne won't hear of it, instead focusing on the day his parents died, when he as a child witnessed Gordon take a bribe. When James tries to explain the situation, Bruce breaks free of his handcuffs, grabs Jim's gun, and points it at his face. Returning it to Gordon immediately, Bruce says that he will never trust Gordon or anyone from the DCPD and heads out with Alfred, saying if Gordon wants to stop them, he'll have to arrest the two. James then receives a note from the Riddler. Though still injured, Bruce sets out to protect those Halfern will be targeting, even as Gotham's Bay starts to flood. Superstorm Renee is on Gotham's doorstep. Batman arrives at a Wayne Enterprises facility to find he is too late, and multiple employees have been infected with the bone formula, while a group of police are on the scene waiting for him. Claiming Batman is drawing a weapon on the group, and refusing to listen to one word from the vigilante, the cops open fire, and bullets rip through Batman. The officers are well prepared for the vigilante, equipped with gas masks that protect them against any smoke bombs the Dark Knight deploys. They purposefully target the man's head, shattering Batman's helmet and injuring his already traumatized skull. Bruce flees to his boat, only to find the cops have rigged it with explosives. Diving into the waters, Batman loses contact with Alfred and nearly dies in Gotham's Bay until Gordon arrives. He takes Batman to safety while removing his own glasses so Bruce can recover without his damaged mask on. Gordon tells Batman that the police were tipped off about the Dark Knight's location by the Riddler. When Bruce questions why Gordon would save him, he is shocked when Jim brings up Bruce Wayne. Jim, who has been thinking about the past since Bruce's return, talks about how he once naively accepted a gift in front of the child years ago, not realizing it was actually a bribe. Eventually he discovered it was so, and he and his partner were to look the other way while a tailor shop secretly conducted a dogfighting ring behind closed doors. When Gordon refused, his partner, Dan Corrigan, forced Jim into a dogfighting match himself. Gordon barely survived the encounter and nearly shot Corrigan in cold blood over the matter, but ultimately let things go when Dan and the others threatened Jim's daughter, Barbara. Jim has been able to do little to fight the corruption in Gotham in the years since, but he hasn't forgotten what these criminals have done to him, or others, like Bruce Wayne. And for the first time ever, Gordon truly believes that Batman could finally change things in this city. Batman warns Gordon, who still isn't wearing his glasses, to stop the boat, avoiding a crash into a nearby pier. When Corden turns around, the Dark Knight is gone. In the Batcave, Bruce finishes up on the jammer that will stop the Riddler from taking control of Gotham's power any further. 
Alfred suggests that Bruce is struggling because he lacks allies, and even the butler himself doesn't feel terribly trusted by Wayne. Largely unresponsive to this, Batman instead deduces the location of Dr. Death from some trace residue on Batman's armor. He heads out to some old catacombs within Gotham, a popular tourist attraction that was completely abandoned during the blackout. Bruce finds Carl's secret lab there, but realizes that the Riddler has been working with this villain all along, using Dr. Death's murder spree as a cover while they built a massive weather balloon to strike out at the city. Just then, This is where Batman's story ends. Next up, Gotham City Falls as we head into the final chapter of Zero Year, The Savage City. 